Good morning, distinguished colleagues, uh, distinguished foreign participants. I'm so happy to welcome you here today. Our unusual session, which is devoted to the Go Game strategy. Please let's start the video that we've prepared for you, so at least you will be familiar uh, about this game and how it's connected with the uh, thought and business. Ancient China, 4th century AD. The kingdoms were fighting with each other more than 700 years. The leaders were looking for the model of sustainable development in order to stop the destructive wars. Uh, Sun is writing the uh, statement of the art of the war and the strategy teaches to avoid the direct conflicts and the highest art is to convince without a sword so it repeats the philosophy of the emperor's goal kingdom zin was the weakest out of seven and if the strong would win the weak one then there we have no need in the strategy goal teaches us how the weak can win the strongest one and zin leaders they apply the strategy and they've joined and merged china into one government and this philosophy shows the new philosophy of development where we have the victory according to the partnership but not the destructive competition so it's not to have one objective and target, but to follow several ones of the north way of Mao Zedong led to the defeat of the communists and the global victory in 10 years. And Mao Zedong could find the key position, which was the advantage of this long term perspective. In 1949, there was the Chinese People Republic, the game go is the strategy and many companies use the strategy goal to develop their business and to look for unstand, not standard uh, ways of development business strategy company gel developed the strategy of high incomes in the big uh, markets and the flexible position of hotels allowed to win the competitive uh, games with international networks philosophy goal helped Fujifilm to transform the strategy into win codec and competitive battle both companies uh, were playing into the game of uh, photo cameras so the Kodak lost to uh, bankruptcy in the ter uh, territory and led to the bankruptcy Fujifilm has developed the strategy of development in several directions at the same time analyzing the position attitude of the consumers and uh, the company could use uh, the black so as a trampoline for the jump goal is the game which helps to think as the partnership and to have the uh, mutual benefit. That's why God is the language of the business of the world, Dalit. Today, after our plenary discussion, after the session, for those who wish, we will set up the workshop uh, on God. Those who are interested with this game, in this game and before we start uh, before i give the floor to our distinguished speakers i would like to have a short presentation about our topic today please start uh, please start the presentation the topic that i've chosen for our meeting these are the uh, uh, convertive strategies and it is connected with the game go with its philosophy uh, because of the crisis that we are getting through, we're going through that as the crisis of uh, large histories. So the clicker doesn't work. Next slide, please. Yes, thank you. Ye yes, thank you. So this big story is the globalization and uh, this optimism in the big story of the market 
thinking and, and people start realizing and understanding globalism is like a threat for the prosperity, the technological progress. Sometimes it leads uh, not to the growth of the welfare and safety, but vice versa, decreasing these parameters. Market thinking, uh, which is based on the balance of uh, benefits and uh, law costs and, and uh, does not take into consideration the ethics issues and leads to the destruction. And in order to get out of this crisis, we need to find new big stories that would be the drivers for our community society to go further. One slide back, please. The game, Go. Uh, we describe the strategies using this intersection with six directions. Horizon represents the four arrows. It means four possible scenarios. That's the illustration of those options that we have. We always have when we make the strategic decision, but very often we we'll lose the important part of the vertical and go we call it the sky and the earth. The strategy specialist tries to aim so to follow and to move uh, against the inertia so that if you follow this this stream then the life just drops you on the ground and from the point of view of the philosophy to have the big idea as the vertical uh, the idea that will move us forward what will uh, be um, our drivers, so the big stores that we need to look for. Uh, I want to show you two simple illustrations from the goal. Uh, the first model is this win-lose model, uh, this principle when each uh, gamer, each player wants to get the dominance in the center and you can see that both players uh, try to fight for the center. This strategy, even mathematically speaking, is proved that this strategy loses to other more efficient models and what kind of uh, models we're talking about here. From the point of uh, goal, uh, we do not try to squeeze our competitor but to agree and to divide the territory with a mutual benefit and the evidence of the strategy uh, is uh, the match of the AI with the champion. And there was very interesting outcome here. The person is trying to maximize its benefit right now and right here. And it's important to have some advantage that he can base on. What's interesting that the more we maximize our benefit now and here, the uh, drastically will lose the chances to win and those uh, neural nets that uh, play with us, why they win. They are capable to win with this zero money. And uh, exactly when we decrease this advantage, when we are ready to share 50-50, then our chances to win are the maximum ones. And this is one of the examples of this philosophy goes that I would like to talk with our distinguished speakers today, because I'm sure that upcoming 20 years will be determined for the whole human civilization. We are expecting lots of transformations and in order not to be out of the a game uh, of the history, we need some strategies which I would like to discuss with our distinguished colleagues. Before I ask a question, um, since we are working on this first day of a strategic club, uh, the I would like to ask uh, the um, uh, representative of AIFC, uh, Mr. Kairadny Matvich Kalimbetov in the representative Moscow club uh, to respond. So it will be like the beginning. So the blacks will start and the whites will answer, will reply. So we can say that the game has started. The goal is the dialogue. And that's uh, how this serious negotiations go. It was an ancient time like this. You can continue playing as you wish. And the first question uh, I would like to ask it uh, and to address it to Mr. Kilimbetov. Thank you so much for this invitation and to bring this club. My question is, 
the game goal is the language of the business communication of business uh, communities of Southeast Asia and one of the fundamental strategies of development of goal this is the strategy of uh, mutual sharing the territory and in game goal and in life I think uh, the maximum uncertainty the best option is when it looks like an intersection when you have lots of opportunities so what are the most important intersections you see for AIF FC and in the world in general that we should look at. Uh, thank you so much, Mikhail. Very deep question, and I will try to answer this question briefly. First of all, thank you so much, and I'm so grateful to all the uh, guests, uh, the people that I know for for a long time, Sir, Mr. Sergei, the general director, uh, who has done a lot for Kazakhstan and in Kazakhstan, and we continue our business uh, collaboration, and also one of the largest uh, banks uh, representatives, uh, China. China Construction Bank, thank you so much for uh, being here today. Um, Mikhail has told us, and we watched the video, where did this uh, game come from to our Eurasian uh, territory. In my understanding, I would like to emphasize golf and everybody who's listening to us, golf can be divided into three large directions in order to understand how to work with this. One direction is professional sport. Uh, so people like professional chess players or professional uh, football players, soccer players, this is the sport and the famous worldwide known around the world. There are federations, there are champions of the world, great masters. So it is developed in three countries, China, Japan and South Korea. They have their schools, there are traditions, uh, several thousands of years, the way of thinking and perception. And as Mikhail has mentioned already, uh, we also involved artificial intelligence, AlphaGo, you know, this program that has uh, won the champion of the world, the person, then there was another program that beat this another program so it seems like people have nothing to do but it was interesting that's one category uh, another category which is interesting for others children and uh, what is interesting that uh, uh, Mikhail has mentioned that from one point of view just a casual type of sport um, it can uh, help to develop the team spirit etc but sport usually the competition we need to win we need to beat the competitor this is the game with zero money let's say so somebody should win somebody should lose but uh, if uh, we start from the early ages to understand the deep philosophy that uh, at least you need to share the success to have this team spirit to understand the opponent then it uh, will uh, really eliminate uh, our children from that great amount of stress that they have in their life and another direction for us probably we will not be the champions of the world and probably we wouldn't be even able to uh, win uh, playing with our friends but at least we will have some kind of uh, understanding of this deep strategy how should we think how should we uh, correlate our ambitions and capabilities and the possibilities how to think on this uh, situation so the develop the decision will be sustainable we can uh, we can win the fight but lose the war so clearly we should understand that uh, goal that's been developing for several thousands of years around the world it really teaches to uh, uh, understand these principles i recommend to discuss uh, to discuss it with uh, Mikhail and he's been here with us for several months who helped us to understand uh, the ideas of Go and uh, i'm really grateful and thankful that to this direction um, um, that while playing the goal game we can have negotiations or to tell something that you don't really want to say verbally it is really good opportunity Mikhail has written lots of books and they are in Russian language very uh, accessible affordable available and it compares the game with the current political processes and uh, with the um, 
uh, military history and etc. So uh, people ask me, why are we talking about AF? Uh, here um, during this day. So I would like to get back to the question you know, to intersections. As you can see, it's important to think not like in this square attitude like um, technologies or positions where you are blocked, you have some kind of dead end, you're closed from inside, but to be some sort of uh, the, um, and to understand this intersection. So our location of Kazakhstan, geopolitically speaking, uh, we have been talking about our multiple directions policy and it's been really well to attract the investments. We are friends with the Western world, historical, cultural relations with Russia. We have good relations with China during 30 years. So I think we have great accomplishments and achievements, but the current situation makes us to look at the situation differently. Uh, the difference uh, between the uh, this a little cell and the intersection, the closed system or half open system or open system. So intersection is an opportunity to come from four sides and speaking like 3D or even more. And for us, it's very important that mm, we, for this upcoming 20 years, some mega trends that will reveal in our life. The first mega trend is the geopolitical contradiction. The world that we could see 30 years ago, uh, like it was the end of the uh, story and everything was supposed to be differently. But nowadays we can see that uh, there were the process of globalization during 30 years. We receive uh, and we get all the advantages of globalization, global technologies, entering the global markets and uh, being able to play um, using the global uh, game um, games, uh, rules in Kazakhstan, what we, we have uh, this great opportunity. But on the other side, uh, there is another trend to uh, deglobalization, this block contradiction, some trade unions, trade wars. We can see it every day as well. And I think it's clear that each country wants to maximize its position. Um, and I'd like to get to the theory of games. Uh, there is this game with the zero money, as it was mentioned, somebody should win anyway. Um, and uh, when we see this contradiction now, I think step by step, this thinking should lead us to some kind of dialogue, to some negotiations, some agreements, because of course we should live in peace in, in the world, which uh, uh, has the rules, some agreements, and I think we'll try uh, to follow this. But of course, uh, the situation is not simple. And uh, we uh, could hear the speech of the president. I would like to draw your attention to his uh, speech, Qatar Economical Forum, when leadership is uh, that Kazakhstan uh, consecutively follows these rules of uh, and um, interactions and um, uh, union agreements, trade agreements. But on the other hand, uh, uh, we emphasize that we have our own opinion, we have our policy, we have independent ex uh, external internal politics, and we will follow this. And it allows in our intersection to op have great opportunities. We have some geopolitical circumstances that allow Kazakhstan to be not just the transport hub uh, like Europe and China were transporting or via Russia, but nowadays it uh, works uh, another way. We can help other countries, speaking about energy, safety and security, and about the supplies of Kazakhstani oil and gas, which we've considered at the session of energy, security and safety. There are many other opportunities and uh, the uh, food safety, the logistics, the transport, and Kazakhstan be becomes this hard, they hop in these regions and in this region. And in order to be the one, we need to be neutral and we need to understand the interests of each side, uh, which has the impact on the process. And we need to name uh, this things. Um, and we are the partners in global trade with you. European Union, with Russia, with China, Great Britain, and the US. 
and uh, Southeast Asia and the Middle East, of course, and we want to be the reliable partners to stay being reliable partners that play the agreed rules. Getting back to this thesis about this win-win game game and uh, in game we need to understand that there should be one benefit uh, that you show the respect to the partner and your relations are sustainable and uh, it can be shock resistant and it's not just geopolitical stress uh, and uh, tension of the fourth technological revolution and uh, artificial intelligence, AI, and the serious changes in social attitudes and mood, many different challenges for any country. So we need to uh, follow the reliable policy and goal will help us. We have agreed with our partners that next year we will have the uh, cup of Eurasia, for example, and for instance, and we want to set up the strategic club that uh, we invite you to enter. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Kerimbetov. So Go Game in China is called as Weizi and China has been demonstrating quite good examples of different strategies that could be called as transformative. And as one example I can tell you, you know, when China uh, was opening the new unknown before countries, uh, China sent the fleet of ship with treasuries. So this ship would come to the place, would uh, uh, unloaded some goods and would provide the best technical achievement of that era like silk, uh, paper, porcelain. The idea was to show what China have to share with it so that to develop partner and to be developed with a partner. So now I would like to give the floor to the CEO of China Construction Bank, Astana Branch, to Mr. Wang Sunhua. And the question that I want to ask you, Mr. Wang Sunhua, could you please share your vision of Weizi philosophy? And do you think that this Weizi philosophy is reflected in the a business development strategy. I know that you also have a quite interesting presentation. Could you please uh, show us your presentation? Thank you, Mihayer. Uh, morning, everyone. Uh, if I know earlier, I will speak before so many people, so many experts, I will not show up. <laughs> Uh, I think my son is more qualified than me to speak here. He had obtained a two-time grading 10 years ago when he was only six years old. For me, the language and the game in all both are not my professional area. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for invitation. Thanks, Mr. Governor Kalimpitov. And thanks, Mr. Korkov and Mr. Mihail. Uh, I think the topic uh, yesterday morning, uh, especially Mr. President Tokayev, the, the uh, speech had already gave us very important information about the sustainability and the responsibility and the economy situation of the world and also of Kazakhstan. So today's topic, I think, is relaxed and interesting and also much more meaningful. Uh, for me, I, I will start uh, from the name of Weichi of Go. Uh, please. So uh, you can see the picture. It is two very wide senior elder, they play game together uh, in ancient China. And the name Go is the foreigner name. Uh, in fact, the Chinese name, is, the ancient Chinese name is Shou Tan. I think from now, Mr. Gorkov need to learn language, Chinese language. <laughs> the Shou Tan, the first character, the Chinese character Shou means Han. The second one, Tai talking. So in ancient China, uh, play games like uh, use hand to talk, 
not use mouth. So the second uh, character of Chinese character qi, there are two parts combined. The upper part is qi means chest. The lower part, the stone, means the chest board. So this is the name. And uh, please. Yeah, yeah, please. Yes, for the next page. For the rules, it's just, uh, uh, I think, uh, I had already uh, introduced. Two players play with 361 black and white chess. And uh, the one who will obtain the most of the area of the chess board will win. Please, next page. So I, I want to also introduce the uh, recognition history because this is Chinese game. Uh, and this game, I think, originated 4,300 years ago. Uh, it's invented by a, a remote Chinese emperor, Yao. His name is Yao. And why he invented this game? Because his son, Dan Zhu, is very hot, tempered, and rebellious, and also naughty. <laughs> So he wanted this game, just let his son can sit stable, can think much more, like meditation. So please, next page. This page is, uh, I think, just a picture. Uh, next one, just uh, uh, like uh, Mr. Gowner introduced, the, ga the game, I think there are much more strategic thought and also reflects ancestral human beings' wisdom and ethic. Please, next page. Uh, I just want to introduce two famous Chinese scenes related to Wei Qi. The first one, this is Chinese character, Chinese sentence. Shan yi zhe mao shi, bu shan yi zhe mao zu. The, the meaning for this sentence, who the, the good players or expert is good at judge or focus the, intent, the trend and the tendency or the intention of opponent. Sometimes he can calculate much more moves and steps, not just to see the nearby step or moves. And the second sentence is Bo Mo Quan Yu Zhe. This sentence means when you design some plan or scheme, if you cannot lay out the whole situation, the whole picture, you cannot just obtain one small area. This is the two scenes uh, describe related strategy related to which game. Next page, please. Uh, in the real life and in the practice, I just want to give three examples. The first one is Barrett and Road. Uh, about the Barrett and Road initiative, I think the idea from ancient China Silk Road. China now just want to improve the infrastructure condition and the financial condition of the country alongside Barrett and Road. By this, such as investment, such as communicate with each other, benefit with each other, also improve the economy development of these countries. And then also China can develop itself. This is like the strategy of, of game, which the second example I want to introduce, uh, I think uh, AFC. This platform designed very good jurisdiction and the preferable policy. I think this can attract the investors from all over the world. By investment can improve the economy structure of Kazakhstan, can increase the economy activity of Kazakhstan also can provide 
many kinds of service for the economy of Kazakhstan and Central Asia countries. So I think this is also a strategy and also apply the methodology of WTK. So also CCB is also the one of the participants of, of AFC. The third example I want to introduce, one of the very important system, CCB Match Plus platform. I think this system is an online system developed by CCB Group and open for all over the world. Any clients can register in this platform. For the client, they can issue and publish their products and service. And also, if other clients have some demand for the product and service, they can also connect with each other. Then, in the end, they will reach transaction. So, this will benefit for all of the clients in the world. And CCB also can provide financial service for this kind of client. So, this is system. I suggest uh, anyone, you can also register in this system. You can find many interesting products of China, of the world. Okay, thank you. Next, next one. Uh, for the CCB Atana branch, I want to just introduce some next step strategy. For the coming, coming years, First, we also continue to provide finance service for the local companies, also for the Chinese investment companies in Kazakhstan, also in Central Asia countries. And the second plan is to promote the con connectivity between China and Asian countries, especially about RMB Center. We will establish RMB Center, YAFC. The third one, also we will cooperate with AIX to develop its own capital market, such as providing depository or custody services. And last but not the least, we will also take social responsibility, such as provide green finance, and such as we'll take part in some welfare activities. I think this is my introduction about <laughs> related to which you gave. Thank you. Uh, my next question will be uh, asked to our guest from Russia, to the general director of uh, Ross Geology to Mr. Garikov. I know that uh, probably Mr. Van Sunhua uh, needs to leave earlier, so please, Mr. Van Sunhua, if you need to leave, you can leave any moment. Now I would like to, the, to ask a question to Mr. Garikov. So, the recent years looked like, let's say, black swans uh, in our calm lake we can say now i think it's the specific time where we see lots of turbulent changes events and we know that you are the author of innovative approach to the strategies that you usually apply in your business and the company development and you say that this is multi-model strategy to let the company to go out of crisis we know that you could find uh, important insights uh, in Go game and you have a specific uh, story when you were getting acquainted with Go game. So you were trying to find uh, the name for your company and Henry Hissinger invited you to play the Go game. Maybe you could, uh, first of all, comment on something that our previous speakers uh, were saying and then answered the following question, how we can learn to think and to act in a multimodal way? Well, first of all, I would like to say Mr. Kelimbetov, Mr. Kelimbetov has left, but of course we understand that uh, today the governor of IFC is uh, having lots of guests and he wants to participate in the many sessions. 
First, the second thing I would like to thank our organizers and I want to thank you for coming here today because the interest that we see now is very important. It will be important in your life uh, as soon as uh, this uh, topic was important for my life. So I want to share with you why we have Go Game and why Go Game in Kazakhstan could be even maybe more significant and could be developed more than in the other countries, including Russia. Well, first of all, I would like to ask you to get back to 1906 and to remember the article of Albert Einstein and he was the first and in this article um, and then uh, he uh, this uh, idea in his article became as a relativity theory so there was a specific phrase Indef indefinite is the standard condition of the modern world so you see it was the year 1906 and now you compare it with our days and you know um, we know what was in the beginning of the 20th century we saw lots of technological changes and you know at that period of time we could see a more dynamic time a more indefinite time if we compare um, these eras and so in that article Albert Einstein was spe speaking about it and he said that the world is changing and we are now also live in this changing world so actually in the history of all countries there were such periods in China's history in European history there were lots of such uh, stories where this indefinite time is the condition and nowadays this indefinite time is a standard we can say we cannot clearly if maybe before year 2020 we could say that we can identify the crisis points well until uh, 2008 when it was the first black swan and uh, there was a book written about black swan about the crisis so before this year we lived in this indefinite time and uh, we could see these black swans coming from different directions but this black swan is an important part of our modern world and i think now uh, maybe we do not evaluate this phrase quite enough but the year 2021 and 2022 led us closer to this idea now the question is what shall we do how can we act if nobody knows how to identify these indefinite areas and that relativity theory is uh, closely connected with this that's why I'm providing the example you know but I want to say that even 3,000 years ago the world was living in this indefinite time because at that period of time people couldn't even uh, do the weather forecasting now at least we can understand the weather forecasting and now we can predict more uh, before maybe people would go to i don't know to some fortune teller or to go to uh, some fortune tellers to ask about successful marriage well even now people go to ask about successful marriage well you know the go game originated in that indefinite time when these there are lots of indefinite actions when you know the work could start recently and uh, different countries could gather together to establish a new state so at that period of time this indefinite time have to be stabilized and go game at that period of time originated and we can say that go game was like the first computer that allowed us to stabilize or to model some situation if we speak about chess you know chess cannot uh, model the whole situation it's usually like one battle and you know in chess uh, the uh, chess is about losses or dying but in go game it's not about losses or dying it's about changing so that's why this multimodal strategy the, uh, and I am the author of this strategy in business this model speaks that we shall not think in one direction only so uh, everything that uh, you were taught at business schools you know about best scenario and worst scenario now it doesn't work because we do not have one scenario we have multiple choice of scenarios the main issue is how to change in between and what uh, kind of points uh, shall we uh, take from these scenarios this is the main part of multimodal strategy and go game 
I uh, it's not I think it's not necessary to play go game really well. I, I would agree with Mr. Uh, Kelimbetov that go game is like a different universe, but it is important to each businessman or to each CEO uh, to learn the idea on the concept or to learn the principles of this game and to understand how this game is played maybe not even to play but to understand and from time to time to play then the multimodal strategy will be formed and it will be as the main uh, thinking process again i want to repeat that we shall not think in one direction and when in 2014 i wrote about this strategy people were asking me how we can do it we usually have one scenario and we go based on this scenario but you can see the year 2020 changed the situation we have not only black swan and this um, black swan um, this black swan we can say destroyed um, all our stability that's why this indefinite area is a standard of our current world and multimodal strategy is uh, the way to work and to live with it and this is a feature that is existing in go game that's why here i am like the proponent of go game on one side and on the other side i am just the person uh, who uh, like this game and as the anti-crisis manager so that's uh, because i usually work with uh, um, uh, businesses and the strategy the web way when we were talking about difficult situations so with uh, geology and everything is based on the principle go and uh, no despite the fact of all those crises and the um situations that didn't have any way out so we couldn't calculate it mathematically the answer was negative practically positive and how to achieve it so you just need to play go to know these principles to understand it and it will help not just in case of communication uh, and to use the situation to think multimodally and uh, look at the scenarios um, and forecast that what you need to change in your scenario to make a decision on time and uh, then you will be ahead of the situation no matter what kind of situation you have and then you will just hear oh he's just lucky okay L let it be so uh, but that is the main idea which is based on this game and these principles were set up four and a half thousand years ago and it works in modern life again why because four and a half thousand years uncertainties were more and that and it was more powerful and more significant and that game uh, tried all these contradictions and multimodalities to identify so please play go like it and i think that agreement that we have achieved uh, to have this business club here in financial center and it is very important because the atmosphere itself and uh, um, the mentality, I th new technologies in particular, it will help. And the financial center itself, it will help to create this atmosphere over here in that international cup that we plan to organize here. It will uh, be the driver to move forward so Kazakhstan it is always a big part of Silkway the uh, so as we, as um, my colleague has convinced you from China Construction Bank that yes this is the part of Chinese history and I applied in my practice the communication uh, principles of the go game uh, when uh, talking and communicating with ba Chinese banks and we could uh, um, attract the investments 18 billion dollars uh, meant it's not small amount of money for one agreement so it was based on the principles and the principle of uh, cooperation with our a big partner that we have in common and since Kazakhstan is again is in the middle of a single way uh, we have lots of things in common and in Kazakhstan there is this philosophical basis to accept uh, this game more than other countries I believe and it helped 
plus it helps and a little bit as an obstacle that is the chess to achieve the aim the principle of struggling the principle of some sort of fighting uh, and this dominant position so i think here we always argue with the chairman of the international federation of chess but we have decided not to debate with them it's like in the end the different sides of life there is active and passive like philosophical philosophical position so we are in favor of this philosophical one so we'll be happy to see you here in our club and we hope that this cup that we will have in a few years it will uh, create a great opportunity to promote Kazakhstan in this goal mark in this goal world and it, it, it is based in Japan, Korea, China, but there are other countries, Indonesia and etc. So it's like a good place for Kazakhstan in this philosophical club. Welcome to our Go Club and we'll be happy to see you and to discuss and I think today we'll have a really great workshop and uh, uh, Mikhail will be able to show it and again uh, the book of Mikhail amazing book I would like to do your attention about the goal strategy and where we can use it also we have um, another scientist Alexander Garbine uh, the director of AI center of the university he's here with us and together with him we were working on interesting story of the program uh, that plays um, as a partner with the human uh, because we cannot win uh, playing with artificial intelligence but we can make it as our helper assistant and uh, the world champion ship alexander tested this program so my question is can you please tell us what are the key trends in the development of this technology the technology of ai what do you see as a scientist and how can we set up this win-win strategy in collaboration with ai hello hello thank you so much for this invitation i would like to start sharing my presentation in a minute you will see it and can you see my presentation yes yes uh no oh. just apologize one second delay yes we can see the full screen okay can i can okay so we can change the slides great so i have a brief information which consists of several small messages and i would be happy if uh, you try to guess this principles which is close to go game principles what i actually count on so the coexistence with ai uh, in this uh, title, it's not the struggling, fighting, it's coexisting. As with any types of new technologies, we need to learn that we work in collaboration. So it is coexistence always. Starting uh, when it was the horse which was domesticated, that was the image of Kentaver in mythology. So let's get to the history that is closer to us. 60 years ago, one of the classics, Marvin Minsky, in the AI sphere, he thought that in 10 years, the AI would be he said it like this we believe that we are at the edge of the epoch that where uh, machines will have the great impact on uh, solving the intellectual tax and it seems like they will dominate he predicted this and then not in 10 years but in 60 years the uh, time changes not as we see in our dreams but we are getting closer to this epoch but nevertheless the main problem that stopped uh, 
and was stopping and still stopping and uh, is being the obstacle to us to use AI to solve important tasks. These are the errors in the system, human AI. Several times the uh, uh, that experience that we've got that stopped the, uh, the implementing AI into the practice and we had this so-called winter of AI. And uh, what was the lack? Um, we didn't have enough the orientation of not the full and complete uh, absence of mistakes and errors, but we need to learn how to work with them. We need to consider each error, each mistake as a step towards the way to the sky, if you allow me to use this analogy from Go Games. So the mistake, it's not the way down. It, the mistake, it's a step and how to process these steps. So that is basically the idea of today's development. Um, so what should we do? We must understand the possibilities and limitations we need to modify in order to coexist. We need to modify our tasks and problems and obstacles for the successful decisions with the help of artificial intelligence and be able to cooperate with it to plan together and to correct our activities in collaboration as well. That's what we need to learn. And uh, we can't say that there is no decision uh, to push the button and everything will start working. That's what we need to start learning to do, to restructure the activities, to understand and to learn to be ready for unexpected decisions and different solutions. And we need to be ready that the world is not just simply undefined, but uh, it uh, gives the weak signals and we need to figure out what it means and to act according to them, not just to press and push with all our possible physical um, uh, power. Um, history, that is the key to the present. In 1956, 10 personalities got together in Dartmouth and to, they have created this direction. So, the leader of Accurate and uh, the leader of those messy ones. So, John McCarty was the leader of the first ones and the Marvin Minsky was the leader of the, the second ones. So, the first one is based on the knowledge. If we go deeper to the history and to understand that we need to be able to see in the simplest and the primitive way. Uh, so, knowledge, it's just like the guide book, some kind of guideline, advanced, automated, um, but it uh, collects and accumulates the knowledge and uh, it is given to us in an acceptable way, in an available way. Um, and the AI, based on the data, that's statistics, the improved way of statistics, providing the data in a brief way. But it used to be this way. Now, it's not just these different schemes and graphics histograms, but the system of making decisions, uh, what AI gives to us based on data. And uh, I really like the definition, the terminology, what simple people say. So, scientist, you understand how letter uh, A is connected to B. And uh, then, taxi driver said to one of the people once, well, AI is based on data and it is connected how B are, uh, is connected to A, but it can be really complicated. For example, A, the sentence in Russian, B, it's translation to English or another language, collection of texts that we can find on the internet. There are lots of different questions. These are technological questions. Another question is, a situation on the board of go and b to choose the way and how to assess and how to digitalize it and etc so there are different five different questions like that for five of them are presented on the slide how to digitalize a how to digitalize b in which way there is the dependence 
and how to evaluate and assess it and etc. So basically, I have represented what kind of AI can exist in our life. In this brief passage, I just wanted to provide some ways of demystification. AI is something that uh, we've got uh, out of something that existed one, two centuries ago. So if you could see weak signals, some of them could see this weak signals uh, five, 50, 70 years ago. Some of AIs uh, were created before computers and uh, there are two questions about AI naive questions who's smarter the person or artificial intelligence and the second question if it is AI for each AI we have micro world and in general the question is not really correct. In the micro world, the human is more powerful, but the tractor is more powerful than human. But if the artificial intelligence is intelligence, uh, here we can have different terms. There was this test Turing. Uh, the dialogue, is it person or AI? But it's not the intelligence yet but where does it come from but it shows up the first time i will escape this discussion but uh, and let's get straight to the last question that i have for you this tests for the collaborative activities only after those we can prove who is person who is intelligence and the person can demonstrate that he is intelligent too so uh, ai agents they show each other even in go game and in uh, security systems etc but uh, being included into the system of cooperation the person is included into this complicated schemes so of collaborations working with ai with digital words and the wonderful opportunities are provided by a go game in the game there is powerful ai in this micro world micro world that's the go game has its own micro world in this game we can learn how we can use artificial intelligence what it means what it means is we need to share the responsibility and functions the beginner can play with ai we can share the initiative of the step and the assessment or evaluation of it and uh, this can covers of this collaborate mutual activities which are potentially very powerful and strong and uh, speaking about the world championships this collaborative systems won not the largest intelligence of course not the largest artificial system but pretty much similar so digital covers and are more powerful than some specific um, elements so what it means is that it's not just the system of ai that solves the task not just the human that decides the task they share the functions and act collaboratively so we can say the machines are everywhere computers are everywhere and ai will be everywhere especially where you need to make decision based on some analysis of hidden directions and in different uh, areas of data where we have uncertainty and we have to act according to weak signals that's all that i really wanted to say basically uh, thank you thank you alexander well artificial intelligence will be everywhere very positive message so we need to be ready for that i would like to give the floor to our 
to one of our important participants of a goal club to Mr. Kairat and after that we will finish our meeting uh, yeah, so well, what I would like to say is to express my gratitude basically to Sergei Nikolaj. Thank you so much that you have come, that you've supported us, you actively support Go in Russia, and we hope for, we hope and uh, we rely on your support on its development in Kazakhstan. Thank you, Mikhail, for this uh, interesting session, very deep philosophical approach, and uh, I think we've been talking a lot about the book. Uh, the last edition is, uh, I recommend uh, all of you to read it. It helps to understand the philosophy of Go. Not like just practically speaking how to train or what, but just to look at it as a philosophy. And I think it will be the main fundamental idea why we need to work on it and Kairat will tell you where to get the ele electronic version we can provide some there will be some conditions for that maybe to subscribe for Go Club uh, pretty much simple ones we try to popularize the Go in Kazakhstan and we are in social nets uh, connectivity there are books and everything and we set uh, organized meetings and uh, Michael, Michael helps us really actively in development um, and I would like to express the gratitude uh, to other participants from China Construction and uh, to Alexander Garbine so for giving us the opportunity to look at this game from the other angle and if we think about it, I think the interaction between the Go game and artificial intelligence is really interesting. And this interaction is very close. You all know the story about AlphaGo, right? Uh, Mr. Karat was saying that uh, Google uh, set the task for the engineers so that they would be able, so this uh, program would be able to beat the be the champion of the world. And you know, it was a big challenge uh, to beat or uh, with the idea that has been developing for many centuries. So. I would like to wish everyone uh, to experience Go game, to develop in it, and to study Go game philosophy. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. And um, everyone who wishes, if you have some time, please stay with us. We have a little workshop on Go game. We have about 20 minutes, and then we need to uh, leave this hall for the other event. Thank you.